Hello technical knowledge seekers, hope you are doing well and as always if you are new to my channel, I would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel so that you shall be able to watch all my latest engineering videos that I will upload on my channel that will be helpful for your future studies. Thank you. Okay, so the problem that we are going to discuss today is basically related to thick walled cylinders okay thick walled cylinders that can be easily called as thick walled pressure vessels okay you can see in this video we need to uh, see here is that we have a submarine a submersible uh, some small hoiser guns and large hoiser guns these are all examples of uh, thick walled pressure vessels and we are interested in uh, the stresses generated in this thick walled pressure vessel as a result of the either the internal pressure uh, basically on in these uh, uh, boilers and pressure vessels and these guns uh, are the external pressure uh, that is being generated on these submersibles uh, which is usually the hydrostatic pressure okay so uh, let's start and we want to understand what kind of stresses that will be generated in these pressure vessels okay so these are all examples of thick walled uh, pressure vessels okay so here is an example for cylindrical thick walled pressure vessels we all know through uh, analysis through computation and through uh, various experimental uh, that we have conducted that uh, three kinds of stresses are going to be generated in a thick walled pressure vessel okay so uh, the most important one is basically the longitudinal st axial stress longitudinal stress are the axial stress which is uh, basically acted along the axis of the uh, pressure vessel the thick wall pressure vessel then another very important uh, stress which is called as the circumferential or hoop stress that basically generated along the circumference of the thick wall pressure vessel and the third type of very important stress that is being generated in the thick wall pressure vessel is the radial stress okay so these are the three stresses uh, that we are usually being interested okay so in thin wall pressure vessels we assume that the stress across the thickness of the pressure vessel is constant that is uh, the radial stress but in the thick wall pressure vessel basically we will assume that this radial stress is not constant but it will vary along the thickness of the pressure vessel and also we must remember that this circumferential or hoop stress will also vary along the thickness of the pressure vessel but uh, one thing that will basically be a constant is basically the axial stress remember it will have some magnitude but it will always be constant along the axis of the pressure vessel okay by pressure vessel i mean the thick walled pressure vessel okay so thick cylindrical shells are subjected to an internal pressure and uh, if you look at it we have the following equations that are being mostly used to calculate the stresses in the pressure vessel the most important one and the one who has firstly calculated the stresses in our, these pressure vessels is lame uh, he was an, a, a mathematician in 1833 he basically firstly calculated the these stresses in thick walled uh, pressure vessel then there is Bernie's equations there are Claverino's equations and Barlow's equations but our emphasis will always be on the Lame's equation okay so let us study the nomenclature of how these stresses are basically being evolved and how they basically propagate and how they dissipate okay so if you look at it this this is our thick walled pressure vessel okay and if you look at it uh, this is the center point this is the center point and from this center point the outer radius is r naught and again if you look at it the inner radius from the center point is r i and along this r i and r naught we have taken an arbitrary radius which is called as x okay this is called x okay so this arbitrary radius uh, x it will always lie somewhere between r naught and r i it, it can be lying anywhere between r naught and r i uh, so you must remember this and the thickness uh, this is the inner radius this is the outer radius so the thickness is t okay so this is a thick cylindrical shell 
Now, if we look for the the hoop stress or the tangential stress, we will see that uh, this is our again our center point. We will see that uh, the tangential or hoop stress will be maximum at R i, and as we go along the thickness to the point R o to the outer radius R o, it will have some minimum value. It will have some minimum value. And its maximum value will be at x equals to r i. This is very important point. But remember, in case of tangential stress, this sigma t is not zero. It will have some minimum value in magnitude. Now, when we go for the radial stress distribution, again, this is our uh, central point. Okay, we will see that uh, the radial stress will be maximum at x equals to r i. But as you proceed along the thickness. It will have a, a value sigma r minimum exactly equal to zero. Okay, so this is the difference between the uh, tangential or hoop stress and the radial stress. Okay, you must remember this uh, uh, distance, uh, this important point. Okay, so and again, this is the sigma r max as they are telling you. This is sigma r min. This is going to be uh, sigma t min, and if you look at it, this is sigma t max. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, stress profile for the thick cylindrical shell subjected to an internal pressure. Okay. Now the uh, the Lehm's equations for that have been generated by uh, Lehm are this. Okay. Okay. You must understand the nomenclature as it is very simple. Uh, the nomenclature tells us that. Uh, R naught is the outer radius. R naught is the outer radius of the cylindrical shell. R i is the inner radius. Thickness of the cylindrical shell is R naught minus R i. P is the intensity of the internal pressure. Uh, mu is the Poisson's ratio. Sigma t is the tangential or hoop stress, and uh, sigma r is the radial stress. This nomenclature you must know in order to understand it clearly. Okay. So, if we go here, all the above mentioned equations are being discussed below. Okay, so the Lehm's equation is basically uh, uh, termed as for the hoop stress or tangential stress is P i R i square minus P naught R naught square over R naught square minus R i minus uh, 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 r naught square minus r i square plus r i square r o naught square over x square into p i minus p naught over r naught square minus r i square. This is the hoop stress or tangential stress generated in the pressure vessel when it is being applied an internal pressure p. Okay, and the radial stress uh, along at any radius x will be uh, p i r i square minus p naught r naught square over r naught square minus r i square minus okay minus r i square r naught square over x square into p i minus p naught over r naught square minus r i square. You can imagine and you can see that sigma t and sigma r are different stresses, but they are only differing basically by this uh, plus and minus sign. Okay, so for the tangential stress, this plus sign comes. So it, it tells us that it will have a higher magnitude and for the radial stress because of this negative sign it will always have a lower magnitude compared to the tangential stress and if you look at it this is exactly the same that we have seen in this uh, here also okay the sigma t max and sigma t will have some magnitude it will be higher and for the radial stress the maximum magnitude is lower compared to the tangential or hoop stress okay so this is being cleared now just for further information that this initial part this initial part that we have over here for the tangential and for the radial stress is basically nothing but uh, the actual magnitude of the axial or longitudinal stress and this stress in the axial direction will not vary along the length of the pressure vessel. Okay, now this is basically very clear. Now we are going to be interested in 
basically uh, sigma t and sigma r. But sigma t will have basically two values. One will be sigma t max, if you go here, one will be sig uh, sigma t max and the other will be sigma t min and the other will be sigma r max which is over here and the other one will be sigma r min. So, these four values of stress we are very much interested in, okay. So, we want to calculate uh, what are going to be these values and we for this we have to use uh, this uh, these stress profiles, okay very important. So, let us proceed with this. So, stress calculation of a thick walled pressure vessel, the axial stress developed in the thick walled pressure vessel is sigma a equals to sigma l is given by p i r i square minus p naught r naught square over r naught square minus r i square, ok. This is a constant. Now, let us proceed with the, the tangential stress developed in the pressure vessel, ok. We already know that uh, the tangential stress developed will be P i R i square minus P naught R naught square over R naught square minus R i square plus because it is tangential R i square into R naught square over X square into P i minus P naught over R naught square minus R i square. Let us call this equation as alpha, ok. Now, for the pressure vessel, if uh, let us see for the tangential stress at the boundary condition P naught equals to 0, which is the outside pressure. Okay. So, if in this equation alpha, if P naught is equal to 0, then this equation simplifies to sigma t equals to P i r i square over r naught square minus r i square plus r i square r naught square over x square into P i over r naught square minus r i square and this P naught and this P naught uh, becomes 0. Okay. And we call this equation as the beta equation. Okay. So, we shall proceed further and we say sigma t max at the boundary condition x equals to r i, ok. So, here if you see using the equation beta, we can say the maximum stress will be maximum when x equals to r i, ok. What is x? If you look, this is x, this is anywhere between uh, r naught and r i and we put this x equals to r i. So, if you look at it, when we do it here, in this equation, we just instead of x naught x square, we will put here uh, r i square because y x equals to r i. So, r i square is being put over here and then we basically simplify this equation. If you look at it, we simplify this equation, it comes out to be p i p i r i square over r naught square minus r i square plus uh, p i r naught square over r naught square minus r i square, ok. So, sigma t max at x equals to r i comes out to be equals to uh, p i r i square plus r naught square over r naught square minus r i square, ok. So, this is one uh, of the stress magnitude for the who part tangential stress has been calculated, ok. Now, let us go to calculate further uh, the minimum stress, uh, the minimum hoop stress. So, sigma t sigma t min at the boundary condition x equals to r naught, ok. What is the boundary condition at this point, this point, and if you look this is r naught. So, using equation beta, p i r i square over r naught square minus r i square plus r i square into r naught square over x square uh, p i into r naught square minus r i square. So, in this equation for x, we are going to put r naught. So, we have put r naught square over here and then we simplify the whole equation and what uh, we get sigma t min equals to, if you look at it, this is p i r r i square over r naught square minus r i square and exactly the same with a plus sign. So, sigma t min comes out to be equals to 2 p i r i square into r naught square minus r i square, ok. Now, we proceed further to calculate the radial stresses developed. For the radial stress calculation, we need uh, sigma r max and sigma r min and we already know that sigma r min will be 0, when we calculated it, its magnitude must be 0 and uh, we know that uh, sigma r max needs to be calculated, ok. So, let us see what, uh, let us start the process. 
radial stress developed in the pressure vessel again we are using the same fundamental equation and sigma r at the boundary condition p not equals to 0 again will be this p not and this p not uh, will be nullified in the same way what we did for the tangential stress and our equation now is basically termed as gamma here basically p not is being nullified uh, being 0 now the sigma r maximum at the boundary condition x equals to r i okay at x equals to r i it will be basically equals to uh, we have to replace this x with r i and here we did it we replace this x with r i and we performed the calculation further and once we cal calculate performed the calculation uh, in here basically we replaced x with r i okay and basically when we do the calculation we can see we get it uh, p i r i square over r naught square minus r i square minus p i r naught square over r naught square minus r i square and if you look at it over here once we calculate this is r i square minus r naught square and this is r naught square minus r i square okay r i is smaller and r naught is larger so we take the minus sign common to make match these two expressions for numerator and denominator and you see they are basically uh, coming out to be uh, uh, one we can basically say so what we get is sigma r max equals to pi with a negative sign so what does this tells you that uh, this sigma r max when calculated this sigma r max will calculate it will be compressive it will be compressive a very important uh, uh, way of stress uh, understanding is that whenever sigma r max is calculated it will have the same inner magnitude of the pressure vessel that is p or pi okay inside pressure but its direction will be opposite it will be compressive remember if you have not for, for, forgotten that uh, the radial stress maximum radial stress uh, are basically uh, if you look at it here the the maximum uh, tangential stress when calculated was basically a, a positive value it was basically a positive value this was positive and you can see from the picture as well and you can see from the picture as well the maximum uh, tangential stress the maximum tangential stress is positive but the maximum radial stress is compressive okay so this is a very important point that uh, you must not forget especially when you are performing the numericals okay so sigma r min at the boundary condition x equals to r naught so sigma r min over here at x equals to r naught okay so again in the main equation that we have done uh, here we in place of x square we will put x equals to r naught and once we put x equals to r naught and simplify you can see these two expressions which are exactly the same with one with positive and the other negative sigma r min comes out to be equal to zero okay and then again these are basically the uh, tangential stresses and basically the hoop stresses and the hexial stresses uh, there is one stress that will also be generated uh, when basically this cylinder will be applied uh, internal pressure p or pi and that will basically be the shear stress okay so the maximum shear stress generated in the pressure measure will be sigma 1 minus sigma 2 upon 2 and we can simplify it to as sigma t max minus sigma r max over 2 so this is the maximum shear stress that will be generated uh, in the uh, pressure vessel okay so uh, this is how you basically uh, calculate uh, the stresses this is how you basically calculate the stresses in a thick walled pressure vessel and uh, I thank you all and I hope you have understood uh, this concept very well. Uh, I thank you all and have a very good day. Thanks.